Now that we know how to turn a pin on and off, we can now try reading if we apply voltage to the pin or not. For example, let's use a button connecting the ground to pin number 2 when pressed. And if we don't press the button, it's going to send 5 volts to pin 2 through a resistor. The reason for this resistor is to not let the input pin floating not connected to anything, which will cause weird readings. This learning shield has the resistor included, so you don't have to worry about this. But in case you want to connect your own button, this is the way to do it. Something interesting about Arduino boards is that we can enable a built-in resistor in the code by putting this line in the setup section. If you do that, then you can connect the button this way without needing an external resistor. But I had a time where this built-in resistor failed after a few months, so I would not rely on this other than just for testing and learning. Please download this example sketch from the description, and that way you can go through it with me. By the way, the sketches are always supposed to be in a folder with the same name as the file, so if you download a sketch, you're going to see this message when trying to open it. Just click OK and it's going to put it inside the folder automatically. This is because in some projects we might require other files and the idea is to contain all the files in the same project folder. Also remember not to use spaces or special characters in the name of the sketch or it's going to fail to load the sketch. In the setup, either initiate the pin as a normal input or with the included pull-up resistor. There's no problem if you use multiple resistors together, so don't worry too much about this. All you need to know is that we have this option to make things easier, and that we should connect the button in a way that connects the ground when you press it. And when you release the button, the pin should read the 5 volts from the pull-up resistor. In theory, you could connect it the other way around, but the common way buttons are connected is using ground as the source of the contact, so I recommend you stick with that. Back to the sketch, after we set the pin as an input, in the loop we are going to read the state of that pin. If the pin receives 5 volts, it's going to return high. And if we connect the pin to ground, it's going to return low. To make things easier, we usually store these values in a variable. Think of a variable as an object that we can give a name and a value. We usually create a variable on the top of the sketch before the setup, but in this example I created the variable in the loop. There are many types of variables, but for now let's just use the integer expressed as int, which is the most popular one. And we can give it the name button state one Just remember to not use spaces or weird characters in the name. So when we put the name of the variable and the equal sign, we're setting that variable with whatever value is after the equal sign, which for this case is going to reflect the state of the button. High when we leave the button release, and low when we press the button. What can we do with that? Well, we can use an if statement that goes like this. If the variable called button state one is equal to low, then it's going to execute whatever is inside these curly brackets. That in this case, we we'll turn the LED connected to pin 13 on. We want to turn the LED off when we release the button, so we do the same, but now we say that if the variable called button state 1 is high, then turn the LED off. Let's upload the sketch to test it. When we press the button, the LED turns on, and if we release the button, the LED turns off. Very simple, right? This is the basis of writing code for Arduino or for anything really. Storing values in variables, taking readings, and doing conditions that if this happens, do this other thing. To make things even simpler, usually we write that code this way using the else statement. That goes like this. If we press the button, turn LED on. And we can optionally add the word else that it will execute whatever is inside the curly brackets if the previous statement is false. So this is equivalent to saying that if the button is released, then turn the LED off. It's basically the same, so you can write it the way you want, but usually we combine if 
else statements to keep things simple and efficient. If this is true, execute this part. If this is false, execute this other part. Also, to help us understand better everything, we usually give names to the pins using constant variables. For example, let's call pin 13 LED1. And let's call pin 2 button 1. This means that when we want to refer to those pins, we can use the name we choose instead. We add the word const to make the variable constant, meaning that it's never going to change when running. In the setup, we will put LED1 instead of 13 and button 1 instead of the number 2. Same thing in the loop. When we read and write pins, we can use the names we gave to them, and this makes everything easier to understand. And if in the future we want to change the pin number, we will only have to change it in the variable where we gave the name to that pin, instead of having to change all the code that refers to that pin. Remember to use exactly the same name with all the uppercase and lowercase letters the same way. I recommend copy and pasting names to avoid typo mistakes. We can also do the same with the define function, but I don't recommend it, especially for beginners. Either way, they'll do basically the same thing, that is giving a name to a value, so we can use the name as a shortcut to that value. One of the goals when writing code is making everything clear to understand, so it's good to give useful names to pins and variables, and write comments everywhere so you know exactly what's going on in the code. We use the equal sign of the if statement, but there are many other competitors that we can use. I list them at the top of the sketch, and we can even combine conditions. For example, if value A is greater than value B, and value C is less than value D, and so on. I suggest experimenting by changing this example sketch to do other things, like making another LED on pin 12 to do the opposite of the LED on pin 13. That way you'll get more familiar with the structure of writing code. Once you handle all this well, watch the next video where we're going to talk about the analog write, that instead of the pin being on or off, it can be any value in between. If you ever need to have a custom PCB for your projects, either your own design or from one downloaded from someone else, you can upload the Gerber files to PCBWay.com and they can manufacture it starting at $5 plus shipping. That makes it easier than using a generic prototype board. I hope it was helpful and see you in the next video. Bye bye.